if you would like to open your Bibles, if you've got one with you. This is the kind of church where that's not really required, that wee statement. If you have your Bibles with you. How no? <laughs> Leviticus chapter 7. Leviticus chapter 7. And we'll read from verse 28 to verse 34. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, He that offereth the sacrifice of his peace offerings unto the Lord shall bring his oblation unto the Lord of the sacrifice of his peace offerings. His own hands shall bring the offerings of the Lord made by fire. The fat with the, the breast, it shall, be, it shall he bring that the breast may be waved for a wave offering before the Lord. And the priest shall burn the fat upon the altar, but the breast shall be Aaron's and his son's. And the right shoulder shall ye give unto the priest for a heave offering of the sacrifices of your peace offerings. He among the sons of Aaron that offereth the blood of the peace offerings and the fat shall have the right shoulder for his part. For the, for the wave breast and the heave shoulder have I taken of the children of Israel from off the sacrifices of their peace offerings and have given them unto Aaron the priest and unto his sons by a statute forever from among the children of Israel. And we ask God to bless his work to us. We've recently been thinking uh, about being a holy priesthood. Um, and the great privilege of the priestly office is something that's bestowed on absolutely every single believer. And as priests, we minister before God. That's to say we minister to God. And we've been given this remarkable honor of being able to bless our Father in heaven. You and I tonight have been given that honor. So we're a holy priesthood. But I wanted to just emphasize another aspect of our priestly service. We're a blessed priesthood. And that's the title tonight, a blessed priesthood. Because you see, something happens to us in the office of the priest as we minister as priests before God. The priestly service um, is a precious ministry then in the Old Testament and now for us. The children of Israel were told to bring their sacrifice to the Lord. They were told to, to bring um, the animal that they were sacrificing, um, to bring it in their own hands. In verse 30, his own hands shall bring the offerings of the Lord made by fire, the fat with the breast that shall be, it he shall bring that the breast may be waved for a wave offering before the Lord. And then later on in verse 32, uh, the uh, shoulder has to be brought as a heave offering to the Lord. And the Israelites had to bring these sacrifices to God. The wave offering of the breast would be, it would be, whether it was the breast or other wave offerings at other times, had to be waved in a horizontal way before God, signifying to all that this offering of the breast that God has demanded is completely devoted to God. Imagine the sight of all these sacrifices and the priests holding up this offering and waving it before God. And then the, the heave offering of the shoulder, that, was, that wasn't 
waved in a horizontal fashion, but that was held in the hand of the priest and it was it was raised up and down before God. Again, symbolizing the same thing, that this is completely devoted to the Lord. This is completely and utterly for the Lord. And you've got this idea of the wave offering and the heave offering. And I was just thinking about this um, earlier in the week, and it was like, there's a rabbinical um, tradition. And I know we're, we don't teach the, the, the rabbi's traditions, but there was a, there's a rabbinical tradition that says that the wave offering, it was waved before the Lord as the king and ruler and sovereign of all the earth. You can just picture that. And the heave offering was given to the Lord as an offering to the God of heaven, to the Lord of heaven. And so when these people brought their sacrifices to the priests, it was offered to God, the ruler of heaven and earth. This is the one to whom they came. They're coming to the, the Lord of heaven and earth. Now that's a marvelous ministry that the priests had. The people brought the offering it was the priests who dedicated it over to God. They gave it over to the Lord. But then it gets interesting. It gets really interesting for me anyway. The, the priests wave the offering. They raise the offering to heaven. And then look what God does. Look what God decrees. In verse uh, 31, which this is precious to me. The priest shall burn the fat upon the altar, and the breast shall be Aaron's and his son's. Then in verse 33, He among the sons of Aaron that offereth the blood of the peace offerings and the fat shall have the right shoulder for his part. For the wave breast and the heave shoulder I have taken of the children of Israel from off the sacrifices of their peace offerings and have given them unto Aaron the priest and unto his sons. That to me is absolutely beautiful because what we have is God taking the sacrifice that the people have brought, that the priests have dedicated, and God is taking that sacrifice and he's giving it back to the priests. That's awesome. He is sharing the blessing that the people bring to him. The priests offer this to God and God shares it with the priests. Is that not marvelous when we think that we are a holy priesthood tonight? And so we come to God tonight and we make our offerings to God tonight and, and God turns them around and shares them with us. That's precious. That's beyond what we could imagine. Here is God sustaining this priesthood with the sacrifice. Sustaining them with the sacrifice, blessing them with that sacrifice. Wow, this is what God is like. And I know you see the beautiful picture of all of this, where you have our great high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ, who made the sacrifice of himself, but he made that sacrifice to God. He's dedicated himself on the cross to God. This is a sacrifice made for God's satisfaction. And we're here because God has turned that sacrifice round and he's shared it amongst the holy priests. How beautiful is that? 
We can't, we can't even bring to God and walk away thinking, look what I brought to God. Because when Jesus gave himself to God, it was turned back upon us. Everything we bring to God is turned back upon us. God sustains us with the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not only does he sustain us with the sacrifice of Jesus, on a one-off, but there's a sense in which the, the sacrifice of Christ is always being, always being shared out among the people of God. Every time we come to the presence of God, we come to the presence of God because of the sacrifice of Jesus. And, and this sharing, how can God share the blessing? How can we gain from what Jesus has offered to the Father? Yet here we are. God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. More than that, we've been saved from the wrath of God because of what Jesus did. This is a blessing that we have been given. We are a blessed priesthood. We are a blessed priesthood. Constantly sharing in what, what God has received from Christ. Now that should humble us. It shouldn't it puff us up. That should humble us as the, the priests of God. That should... Uh, cause us just to be in awe of what God is doing and of what God has done, to be thrilled beyond what we could think of God apportioning the sacrifice to each one of us. And it should cause us to praise him, worship him, lift our hearts up to him, you know, we talk about the wave offering and the heave offering. Folks, I want to say tonight that the, that the offering of praise, which is the sacrifice of the priests, that's a heave offering to God. Our hearts are being lifted up to God, and we're saying to God, all of it is yours. Everything is for you. This is, we are completely dedicated to God. We worship God. We Come tonight to praise God. We're here to pray, but my goodness me, we must never pray apart from also praising and worshiping our Father. Look at what he's done. Look at what he's enabled. Look at what he shared with us. And so the sacrifice that the priest should be making tonight is the sacrifice of praise. It's the sacrifice of our lips. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. That's Hebrews 13, 15, as we know. Now, we worship and we praise our Heavenly Father. We come to him in the light of the sacrifice of Jesus, and we come to him tonight, we come to him tonight, and we, and we are singing in our hearts, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. That's our offering. That's our reasonable offering to God. And he turns that back upon us. Have you ever been in that place? Of course you have. When you're worshiping God, you're praising God, and your heart is so warmed and so filled, it's overflowing because you're praising God. What is God doing at that moment? God is receiving the blessing of your praise and worship. We are blessing his heart at that moment, and this is what he does. He pours it all back upon us. He receives the blessing, he receives the praise, and then he gives it back to us so that we are blessed. Isn't that amazing? We try to bring a blessing to God and God says, thank you, there you go. 
Enjoy praising my name. Be blessed because you're blessing me. That's the sacrifice of the priests tonight. That's the sacrifice of the, of the holy priesthood. That's what makes us not only a holy priesthood, but a blessed priesthood. So when we come to God just now, then just enjoy that God is blessing us for coming to him. Great is the Lord and most worthy to be praised, greatly to be praised. What a blessed priesthood we are. Let's come to God then in prayer. Dearest Heavenly Father, we're amazed. We're amazed that you sustain us with what we bring to you. We're amazed that you sustain us by what Christ gave to you. But Lord, when we think of our heart's desire to lift up your name and adore you, we, we do this, we come before you every time we do, and we, and we want you, Lord God, we want you to be blessed by us. We want your heart to be warmed by what your people bring and Yet here we are, and we're sustained by that because you share the blessing. Oh, what a father you are. What a God you are. We bow before you tonight, Father, and we praise your holy name. We lift up your name, Lord God. We, we lift up our hearts, a, a heave offering to God, the God of heaven. And we are overwhelmed at the blessing that pours back upon us. And so when we come with our prayers, Father, like our prayers for Anne at the beginning, those prayers come to you, Father, in the context of, of a, a heart longing to bless and of a heart that is blessed. We pray that the blessing would be poured back upon our sister, upon Matt and upon Philip, as we come to you tonight with whatever requests we bring, Lord God, we pray that, that those prayers would be answered in a way that not only glorifies you, but in a way that enables us to enter the blessing. We absolutely adore you, Father. We adore you for Jesus. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks for the cross. Holy Spirit, thank you for applying the cross to each of our lives. But please receive, Father, from our hearts tonight. And we thank you from, for what we receive from you. In Jesus' name, amen.